Welcome to this flex training video. I'm your host, Marcus Merritt. Today we will be talking about custom fields, and specifically global custom fields. These were recently moved from Flex 4 to Flex 5. And when I say moved, I mean not just added into 5, but also removed from 4 uh, because these settings, we changed them a little bit and that the way 4 worked wouldn't store that data in this anymore, and so it's only accessible in your Flex 5 system. Okay? To access this, we're going to go to the top left to our main menu, to System Settings, and right here we've got Custom Fields. Okay? If you had any existing custom fields in your previous uh, system, they will be here. All their settings will be intact. Uh, we just now have a new and improved way for some of this data storage, and so they're only available here. Um, for this, um, if I want to create a new custom field, I would go to the bottom left here and hit Add New Custom Field. Now, in this, first we will select whether it is a resource, so it would be a contact, an inventory item, or a serial number, or to be an element, these would be things like pull sheet, uh, quote, invoice, etc. Okay, uh, we're going to mostly talk about this in the resource type ones um, uh, on this, but are very valid to be used in the other scenarios. Okay, uh, within a resource type, you can be selective. If I say contact, I could say, well, I only want this to be available on employees or on clients, something like that. Okay. Um, custom fields, just as a, a circle back on this, they're designed for when you have data that you want to store that Flex is not set up in its default system settings, in its default architecture. We've intentionally made it so you can then say, well, let's just create some fields so I can still add and store that data. Um, it's not going to pull into your regular screens. You will have to move to the special tab to be able to see it, but can be pulled into reports if that is the kind of information that you're trying to get out in some kind of report. Okay? The next here is the group name. And this is going to be about the tab that it goes on. So when we create custom fields, it's going to create an additional tab or more tabs if we create additional. And if we want, we can either have multiple fields on the same tab or we can have multiple tabs, each with their own or multiple fields. Okay. In this, it's going to try to search for our existing ones. So if I go in here, I have that test tab, I can just say I want this new one to go to that. But if instead I want this to go to test tab two, then it's going to tell me, hey, they, that, that doesn't exist. And if I go to then save it, it's going to say, do you want me to create this so that I, it says now here, this group name does not exist. Would you like me to create it? So we have another group thing to make sure. And this just helps make it so that everything will match up and you don't have that accidental misspelling in there. Okay. Um, the field caption is what's going to be next to the field when you go ahead and um, uh, look at that custom field on that new tab. Okay. And then the field data type. Now there's a lot of data types in here and not all of them are going to make sense. Um, mostly I find people use probably four or five of them. I'm going to show a bunch of different ones that might be usable and are, are um, accessible, ones that I've already created in my test here. Uh, but no, these are here partially because we use this same list for many of the fields that we add to the system. And so some of them matter more to us than they would for a thing you might use in a custom field. But know that they do work. They just don't always make sense for something you might choose. Okay. In this, you can set permissions on who has rights to see and edit this if you want to connect it to some existing permission within your system. Okay. Um, and this field ID is to do with reports. If you're going to choose to pull, pull this into a report, you will need to set a field ID for this. Okay? Um, and just a note, custom fields are very commonly used by our endorsees when they do custom reports for customers. So that is another very common use of these. I'm going to go ahead and not create a new one. And I'm going to look through it, some of our existing. So we see here, uh, again, people use custom fields for different things and different items. And so I don't have any specific great examples that I want to give on this. 
Uh, but I do want to go in here and show some of the different data types that can be used. So you'll see in this, other than this top one, this test field, I just named these fields the same as the field type so I could be able to see and double check how they were all working. And I just want to then explain that to you. You'll see on all of these, I made all of these for inventory. Now it's important when we say inventory and serial units, we can run them for either. So I can either have it at the model level, that's when we set it in inventory, um, and which on this, I've done that. So I'm gonna open my 932 speaker that I always like to use. Okay. And we'll see, I now have a new tab called test tab. Okay. We could instead set it to a serial unit and that would make it when I open a specific unit, then I would have a tab here. But we see in this case, because I've set it all for inventory, I don't have it here. It's only at the model level. So I'm going to click over to that test tab. And because I've put so many custom fields here, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the top so we can look at them. Okay. So the first one here is our option list. That's the only one I didn't rename. That's the way to create an option list in here. Now, this is the only one I want to jump back over here because there is an additional setting you won't see until you select it. But if you select option list, you're going to get this pencil to the side where you can then pop up another sub menu where you can create or delete and reorder these in here. Okay. So you will be able to, to do that, but it only, if I turn this off of option list and onto anything else, the pencil goes away because none of the other ones need that additional setting. Okay, I'm gonna hit cancel to leave it there. And again, at the moment, I've just set this to say option one, option two, option three, uh, but it's whatever you want that to be, what you need that to be, I can then go in here and select that. You'll see in the Flex 5 settings, anytime I change and click out, it is immediately saved. There is no update button. Okay. Uh, the next one here is a Boolean. And that is just a yes or no, essentially a true or false option. And so that's in the kind of thing where you're just wanting to say, is something yes or no, right? Uh, whatever that might be, okay? Um, when you set those, it will always default to no, unless you then go into it and change it to yes, okay? And then it will save that information. The contact here is straightforward that it's just the ability to pull something from your contact database if you want to list something here. Okay, uh, whatever contact you may want to list for whatever reason you may want. Uh, date, very straightforward. It's only a date. Um, uses the same kind of interface, just as we see does not save time information. Whereas the date time has date and time available. Okay, the same way those other fields. These next two are very similar, but a couple key things. We have number and integer. The key thing to remember is in an integer, it must be a whole number. So you'll see when I try to type period, it's going to be, it's going to not work. It just gets rid of it, right? If I go 12.5 and then I click out, it rounded that to 13, okay? So integer will always be a whole number, whereas number, I can say 1.5 and it's going to save that data, okay? So just keep in mind what you want to do. The positive with this is it would then save somebody from typing characters, if they're just trying to type, I'm gonna say it's eight and type out EI, you know, GHT, it doesn't work. You can only put a number in there, okay? Whereas the most common ones, honestly, I think are gonna be these two, this text and text area. Text is a single line of box where I can just type whatever text I want. Um, thank you for watching this video. And in the text area, it's the same thing, but I can. it's under the understanding I'm going to type more and I can have more of that displaying at once. You can actually put quite a lot of text in this text. It's just once it gets past this, it's going to disappear off your screen and not be visible. In the text area, you can have it word wrap and or intentionally, you know, push into next lines. Okay. So I mean, thank you uh, for watching this video. Um, and then the last one here that I listed, and again, I don't necessarily think you're going to use it, but just to show that we can set a user and it does work in this, it is going to pull from the user database. So you'll see in here, I only have the sets of users that are in there versus in my contacts, I'm pulling from the contact database. Again, it's only pulling that, uh, but it does work. Um, again, what I think is going to be the most common, people are going to use the um, option list. 
They're going to use Boolean, um, dates or dates time, number, text, text area. Those are going to probably be the most common, but a few of these you may use the contact or user. Uh, you might choose to use an integer, something where it really does need to be a, a um, whole number um, in that kind of way. So that's kind of the key information there. So pretty straightforward in that it's just about you understanding what you want to accomplish with those custom fields. Uh, the one other thing I want to highlight really quick is these you'll see here are listed based on the order they are displaying here. If you decide that's not the order you want them to be, right? If I want this text area, because these are really more important to be up higher, I can take and click them and move them up higher. Right? So I can take and push this up here and take my text area and push it up here. And again, you see there's the quick reload as it saves that data. There is no button to hit unupdate. Okay? If you have any additional questions about custom fields and how they work, please follow the link to the community page where this has been posted and post your Q&A there. I promise that I will respond to any question posted on any of these Flex training videos. Otherwise, if you have other needs, you can reach out to support at flexrentalsolutions.com. You can always go to our help center.flexrentalsolutions.com, or you can email training at flexrentalsolutions.com. Thank you.